Well, it is the new year. I can't believe it. 2022. Excited you are here and listening to the Get Pregnant Naturally podcast. I'm excited for today's episode. We're going to be giving you a plan to help you what, what to do for the new year, 2022, to help prepare your body for pregnancy success. This episode is for you and your partner. You don't want to miss it. And really, we're going to be talking about some strategies to help you right now. Hey there, I'm Sarah Clark, founder of Fab Fertile and your host. I believe the functional approach is the first step for anyone struggling with fertility. And my aim is to help you get pregnant naturally. Today on the, the top of the podcast, we are digging into the new year and really help helping you prepare for pregnancy success in 2022. I'm so thankful that you're here and thanks so much for listening. Make sure you hit subscribe. And if you know someone else who is on the fertility journey, please share this podcast with them. Happy New Year. Excited for 2022. I am recording this back in December. So this is a happy new year to myself and to you as well. So the future me, the future you. So excited that you are here and you are ready to have your baby in 2022. So I wanted to talk about you know, what you need to do right now to fast track your chances of pregnancy success, give you a plan and have you um, get started. So, you know, if you're like me, and maybe you are as far as a type A, like action oriented, kind of let's get it done kind of person, you probably set some New Year's resolutions or let's call them New Year's intentions. And I do this every year. And it turns out the average person gives up their New Year's resolution by January the 19th. And even if you are like a push through, kind of do it, you know, get it done kind of person, um, the average person as of January the 19th will give it up. So you may be able to go a little bit longer, um, but is the are the things that you're doing right now, are they really setting you up for success? Or, you know, is something that you're doing kind of wasting time? So I'm just going to talk about some of the themes we see, some of the things we see where people waste time on the fertility journey. And as you may know, so we specialize with low AMH, high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency and helping uh, couples get pregnant naturally or improve their chances of pregnancy success at the fertility clinic with their own eggs. So if we can help, we can help them, we can help you. So it's basically many people are like, but you know what? I've tried everything. I've done all these changes. Most people come to us. They've been trying for, you know, two years naturally, or they've had at least one failed IUI or IVF. So they've already thought that they had their solution. They thought once they started trying, it came off the pill, they'd get pregnant. They thought, once they selected an IUI or an IVF, that that would be their solution. So it can be very, um, it can be a very hard. You might feel jaded. You're like, you know what? I've already made these diet and lifestyle changes. I've done gluten free. I've, you know, I have looked at my blood sugar. I have already, I'm already on thyroid medication. I have got, um, you know, I've looked at my mental emotional stress. You know, you've you've probably done a lot of these things. Most people I see have done a lot of these things, but it could be with a number of different practitioners all over the place, and no one's really brought it you know, all together. So we have talked about before, um, these generalized recommendations, but the, the, the main thing for you to not waste time is to focus on the basics and the basics are the diet piece. So to really dig into the diet and this is you and your partner and you guys doing this together. It is not just, even though, you know, we're, we're primarily dealing with female factor and fertility, it is not just you making the diet changes. It's a new year, you know, it's do you uh, um, really dig into the diet? We've got a fertility challenge coming up soon. So definitely join that. And this will kickstart you off for the new year and um, get you rolling with these diet changes because um, like diet is number one, diet and sleep to me are, 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 you know, right, even right together. So digging into the diet, figuring out those top inflammatory foods, doing this with your partner, taking out those top allergens, reintroducing them over the course of of 30 days. Look back on the podcast, how and why to do an elimination diet. I I take you through the exact steps, why it's so important to really reduce inflammation. So if a seemingly healthy food or not healthy food is coming in it's in, and then it comes into your body and mounts an immune response and causing inflammation in your body. If your body is under attack, it wants to, to survive, not procreate. So these basics of diet, the diet that is right for you, that really personalized approach, sleep, the really being able to 
you know, optimize sleep. I've done many episodes on sleep. And so if you are still, like, if you are thinking of going to the fertility clinic and first of all, you, you haven't dug into the diet piece that you're playing around a little bit, maybe you're gluten light and you, you know, you cheat on the weekends, or maybe you're like, you know, I know that dairy kind of gives me a bit of a problem, but I'm taking a lactate. Um, or, you know, what? Like you're like, oh man, when I have that chocolate, I get a headache a little bit later or, uh, you know, so a lot of the times we feel like, we already know, we know when we have something that we either have digestive issues, or maybe you get acne, or maybe you have a headache, or maybe your joints hurt. You know, we already know typically there's something wrong, but many times we just keep eating the food. And it's hard for us to make that connection because the food you have on Friday, you don't notice the problem until until Monday, and you're like, oh wait, it can't be that. Or maybe you're like caught up drinking. Many of our our, our many of our couples we work with, you know, we all know that alcohol is contraindicated during pregnancy. So when you're trying to be able to give up alcohol is key. And maybe you use that as your coping mechanism. Maybe there's you you just enjoy a social drink. Maybe not drinking is like just torturous for you. And so that's being able to have someone, you know, help you and like, you know, hold you accountable and call you out on something like that. Obviously, if it's, if it's more of, um, if it's more of another, like if it, there's, there's a problem with drinking, then you want to get more assistance with that. But typically most couples we see, um, they just may be having more, more drinks than, than is really they need. And they might be using them to, for, for, for a coping mechanism. So the diet piece is key. If you haven't dug into the diet and you're thinking of going to an IVF, I really encourage you to take, you know, a minimum of three months, six months is better to figure out what's the right diet for you. So then you can optimize that, the the chances of that IVF working. The next one is the sleep. If you have sleep issues, like if you are um, having a hard time falling asleep, if you wake up during the night, if you wake up in the morning and you're exhausted, if all of these are impacting your blood sugar, which then impacts your sex hormones. So if there's sleep issues, there could be there could be gut infections because gut bugs are more active at night. Um, you might just be like be able to be, you know, how having you set boundaries, like maybe you just have a major FOMO if you're miss, if you're missing out and you're you're just working and socializing and going all the time and being able, and it's hard for you to go to sleep before two. Maybe you're having caffeine, like it, you know, past past noon and that's impacting your sleep. So we work on on sleep for months. If your sleep is not optimized, i.e. you're not getting between seven to nine, nine being best of you just having a beautiful sleep. Those are things that your, your body's trying to tell you and forcing it and going to IVF without addressing the sleep may not lead to the success that you're, that you're looking for. So the sleep piece is key, the movement, um, here we are in the new year, let's, let's get moving. And maybe you're like, it's January the 19th when you're listening to this and, and you've already given up that uh, intention. Maybe you, this year you wanted to pull back on the exercise. You're into CrossFit, you're into like, you know, um, high intensity interval training, like for too long, you're, you're training for a marathon. All of these things could be, you know, maybe too much for you. You want to see how you feel the next day. And is that exercise right for you? Or maybe you're just like eh, feet on the couch, forget it, man, I can't even move. And so that is equally like that sedentary uh, behavior is not, is not healthy for your fertility as well. So um, first is a diet. You want to dig into that personalized diet. What has been missed before you go on to an IVF or you waste months trying something and maybe you're intolerant to lettuce. Maybe you're intolerant to um, the smoothie you have every day filled with almond butter. Who knows? It could be like some, it could be a healthy food, the potential you're eating on a regular basis because you have leaky gut because of all the antibiotics you were on, the birth control that you're on, the chronic stress that you've been under for years now has caused you to be, be intolerant to your favorite foods. And then you don't really know what's happening. So again, digging deeper um, with the diet piece, looking at the sleep, if it's out of balance, you know, how do you optimize it? Um, and there's lots of things from a biochemical standpoint that could, with gut infections, with um, people use sleep aids and take melatonin because melatonin has been proven to help with IVF. But then we see people with their, their melatonin levels like off the chart. So um, that may impair your body's ability to, to, to um, make its own melatonin. There's other people saying that's not the case, but otherwise, but, but the, you know, no matter um, the, if you're supplementing with melatonin, 
you know, why is your melatonin low? And so there's things for us for us to do to dig in deeper as to why that's been impacted. Um, and it could be blue and green light. It could be uh, a myriad of other things. And that impacts both male and female uh, fertility. So sleep is key, digging into the sleep, optimizing it, looking at the exercise or movement that's right for you, and then the stressors. So here we are, 2022. And you know the moment that you start trying for your child, that's when you want to expand your family have a family. And, um, the moment you are start trying, you already are a parent. And so you may feel, um, behind, you may feel after the holiday season, spending with friends and family, maybe you're stuck in comparison that maybe there was pregnancy announcements. Maybe the, the, you know, seeing family, seeing children was very triggering for you. Maybe it wasn't, maybe you were extremely happy for them, but you felt sad for you either way. you you may have felt triggered, which is completely normal. So you know, getting honest uh, about those mental, emotional stressors. If there's trauma, helping being able to move the trauma out of your body. And if you've been diagnosed with, you know, with low AMH or high FSH, diminished ovarian reserve, premature ovarian insufficiency, or any other fertility diagnosis, that is traumatic. And if you view it that way, it is. And so being able to have someone, you know, help you move through those emotions is key. Because it can be hard to do this by yourself because you're like, I'm fine. Everything's okay. And then you start feeling alone and you start feeling like stuck and you start feeling that that hopelessness piece and you've lost track of the intuition and the trust and the like the just that deep knowingness that you will, you know, that you already are a parent, that you're that you know your child is there. It's she or he or she is waiting. And so, and as you start to make these changes. And um, being able to get into that very hopeful spot. Many times we, you know, the fertility industry can kind of, it can a lot of anticipation and then a big crash, like this huge roller coaster, roller coaster. And even the, the, the natural fertility journey is the same thing, like anticipation period comes, anticipation period comes over and over and over again. And it can really, it can really play with your mind. So it's important to, um, first of all, acknowledge that piece, right? That here we are. 2022, you, you thought you'd already be pregnant and maybe you've experienced loss too, right? So we've done many podcast episodes on miscarriage, on loss that, 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 you know, in itself can be, um, a lot of grief, a lot of trauma, being able to have someone help, you know, that may have experienced it. And maybe if they haven't experienced, they've been on the fertility journey, but being able to help, help you with that trauma, because that can get locked in our body can be like subconscious blocks and maybe, um, for you, you haven't, you know, even acknowledged it, that maybe you didn't even tell anyone that you were pregnant because you were, you didn't want to tell anyone before the 12 weeks, or maybe you did tell people and then you had to explain that you had the loss. And so there's, you know, if you, I haven't experienced a loss, so that's, um, you know, that's something if you've experienced it and we have people on our team that have, so, um, that can help you with that. And so, there's different, different, um, you know, different modalities with, you know, EFT. So emotional freedom technique to help identify the trauma and move it out of the body. Obviously like therapy, um, if coaching is not, is not, um, not appropriate as well. So we always refer out. And if we see that, you know, someone is really, really struggling maybe you're in a very dark spot. Right. And so depending on where you are, but the main part of this is it really is a comparison thing where people get stuck in this comparison, and it's, you know, comparison is a thief of joy. So how do you get back to joy? How do you reconnect with your partner? You know, our intimacy might've just been shelved for baby making. And we forgot about all the stuff that we love to do with our partner that made us happy, which then helps with oxytocin and the love hormone and really helps us getting in that parasympathetic state. So all of that is equally important, you know, talking about our diet, looking at our sleep, looking at our movement, the mental, emotional stress. And so as we go into um, this new year, you know, if we haven't focused on those basics, those are some healing opportunities that could be missed. And it just, you know, it takes 90 days for the egg to renew itself. The life cycle of the sperm is 70 to 80 days. So in a short period of time, you can make massive changes to your, your eggs and your partner's sperm. There are things you can do. So, you know, our program, the Fat Fertile Method is six months really, you know, as you start to make these changes and then you can start getting the green. So basically during our protocol, we're going to ask you not to try because some of the um, supplements may be contraindicated during pregnancy. So then you'll get the green light to try. 
and then we'll start optimizing, you know, optimizing your health that way. So, um, lot lots to do when we really focus in on those basics. And many of the times we want to, you know, the basics sometimes can be hard <laughs> and they can be, we got to dig a little deeper, go a little deeper instead of a little more narrow, instead of this wide thing of trying all these different teas and supplements and um, all these other sort of um, things that actually take us away from what's important. The, the basics are key. What have you missed? Go deeper on the diet, go deeper into the sleep, deeper in the, met, you know, the mental, emotional stuff and get support with that is key. So not focusing on the basics, waste time, and then not having your partner in on this. Like we, we support couples, unless you're single by choice, couples to help them get pregnant naturally or improve their chances of pregnant success, success uh, with their own eggs. So your partner um, will have a semen analysis as well as uh, blood chemistry review, not to diagnose, but to educate and seeing kind of what's been missed on his side of, side of things. And we'll set goals for him. So most partners are very open-minded. They're very supportive. Even if they're, they're not dealing with, with, with male factor, they, you know, they're ready to support their partner. If your partner's not, um, that, like we have in the beginning, I was only, you know, I was coaching um, women only and just felt we were missing the whole other equation there. This is for you guys to do it together for, to come together as a couple and make these foundational changes. And if he is not open to it, it just, is not going to work. It's, it's just, you've, you both got to be on the same page. And we just, we just asked you to have an open mind. So, you know, if your partner, cause most times we see the, the female partners made a lot of the changes, the male partner, he, he's ready. He's open-minded to do the changes, but he may just may not know what to do. So we have the guy, we have you do the diet together with your partner. So you guys are eating the same food together. And, you know, and it's not about you starving, you eating beautiful food together, doing movement together, you know, working on your relationship. If there's any like toxic issues or, you know, whatever may, you know, may, uh, may be going on with your relationship. Most people we work with are deeply in love and want to have their baby. There's, there's a, a number of people we work with that they're deeply in love, but this, this journey has, you know, pulled them apart and they've forgotten the, 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 you know, the, the basics of the relationship and it is, there's a lot of strain and it can be very hard on your relationship. So that's why we have experts to really help you dig into that. So it's important to have your partner as part of this, as part of this, um, you know, making these changes, not you doing it by yourself, you guys together. And so that's what we see fast track success because that then helps that you are on the same page as your partner, your communication improves. And that just keeps that, that heavy weight off your shoulders. And you start to get into that receiving state. So, um, I'm excited that you are here and it is the new year 2022. So if you're ready to fast track your chances of pregnancy success, having a plan for you and your partner, all you need to do is go to fabfertile, F-A-B-Fertile.com, click on the link to apply here, and we will come up with a customized plan for you during this customized consultation and help you get um, prepare your body for pregnancy success in 2022. So excited to speak with you. Take care and just go to fabfertile.com. So F-A-B-Fertile.com to apply.